936, our guest in this segment is uh, Nick Deal. You may have heard of him. He's kind of a big deal. <laughs> Nick, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I should get your microphone on, too. Hey, uh, good tan, dude. What have you been doing? I've been working the field. <laughs> <laughs> Mowing, putting up fencing. I've been busy. Yeah, man. Uh, how, how's business at the airport? Uh, it is booming at the moment. We've... Uh, We've got uh, it's been pretty a pretty busy summer anyway, and uh, now we're preparing for our air show, and uh, mm-hmm. so we've been very busy out there. There's a lot of a lot of activity on the field right now. What is the status of the proposed charter school at the airport at this time? Um, it, it is. We are still slowly working on that. Um, honestly, we've uh, it, we, we've had to put it on hold just because we can only do so many things at once. Um, but it's still something that we are working on and hope to, to hope to bring to fruition one day. Years down yeah, the prob- road, do you think? Yeah, at this probably point? a couple, no couple of years or so, maybe. Imminent, right? Yeah. Well, okay. I don't know about imminent, but I, we're going to continue to work on it. Yeah. We're not giving up on it. That's cool. Uh, let's talk about the air show. All right, because it's now finally upon us. Yes, it is. West Virginia's mm-hmm. greatest air show, a centennial celebration of Shepherd Field. Um, it is our 100th birthday this year as an airport. We're the oldest airport in the state of West Virginia, and we are very excited to uh, to bring uh, an air show back to the civilian side of the field. The last one was in 2008, and uh, we had uh, in 2008 we had about 50,000 people come out for that, and we we're anticipating about that number this year. We are the oldest. Were we the first? Yep, we're the first airport and the oldest in the state. Well, that's pretty cool. We actually, gosh, the airport actually came into existence like 20 years after the Wright brothers did their first flight, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but, and we, but I'm going to come back to the air show in, in just okay. a second. In terms of future changes for the airport, are there going to be great changes or m- um, moderate, consistent changes? There are, I think you can anticipate uh, more business there. We are uh, working on several projects at the moment. I think some of these are going to be some, some of these are going to be large and some of these are going to be smaller, but we are consistently growing. And, uh, and we have been for the past four years, and we anticipate that trajectory to continue over the course of the next three or four years at least. What's the rough population of businesses out there right now? Nick? I think we have 24 out there at the moment. And so we're 24 uh, what? 24 businesses at the moment. We uh, and we we have 24 businesses. We have 96 based aircraft, more based aircraft than any other airport in the state. Um, all of our hangars are full. There's a waiting list for most of them. Um, we we have no office space available at the moment. We are full, um, but we we do want to grow. We know that we need to build some additional hangars. We're looking at some uh, some. We'd love to build another executive hangar and some uh, box hangars and T hangars as we can. It's it's an ongoing uh, it's an ongoing struggle to to try to find funding for those sorts of things. Um, it's specifically with T hangers. The reality is that unless we want to charge exorbitant amounts of money, which is not really fair to local pilots, it, it takes between 30 and 40 years to recoup your investment on those. And so we're always looking for grants, uh, for T hangers. And what for is a T hanger? A T hanger is a hanger. It's actually shaped like a T. And so you have, if you push your aircraft into it, uh, so that, that the tail is in the is in the lower part of the T, and the wings are in the upper part of the T. But you can fit more aircraft in one building when you do them that way. And they and you can uh, you put them you can put aircraft on both sides of the building. Do you are you positive cash flow airport at this point, or is it going to take time yet? We well we we are overall we are a positive cash flow airport. We uh, we generate about ninety two percent of our own revenue. Uh, we are not heavily dependent on on public money to operate the airport um we and i say we do that uh because we have to not necessarily because we want to we're also a bit of an anomaly we're one of 12 airports in the country that are uh, general aviation airports with military bases on the airport and because of that the Commercial airports, uh, the FAA funds pretty heavily. Um, if any of you take uh, commercial flights, then you know your your the cost of your ticket is significantly more than what you're paying. Um, it's just like riding a bus. If you're taking public transportation, uh, the the cost of taking public transportation is significantly less than what it actually costs. But it's necessary to get people around and for communities to continue to grow and and, and evolve. Uh, into into larger areas and obviously commercial uh, airline service is is a necessity in our country and in in the entire world and you're not going to see it go away ever 
uh, but it'll always probably be heavily subsidized by the by the feds and and to a lesser degree by the states but our airport's not like that we are we receive very very little funding we receive uh, twelve thousand dollars a year from the state and um the uh twelve thousand yeah, dollars a year thousand dollars a year <laughs> I'd, I'd send it back and go thanks <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we continue to talk to our elected officials and encourage them to we uh, if you look at the states around us there of course there's five states that that, that west virginia has uh, touching borders and uh all of those fund uh they fund aviation at minimum at, at about 10 times what we do and up um, when you look at, at Virginia and Maryland, for example, they they fund uh, airports significantly higher than they do in the state of West Virginia. But that being said, um, we're we're grateful for whatever we we can get from the state. And uh, the um, we I, I love West Virginia as 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 you know I'm a West Virginian by birth and now West Virginia by choice. And our airport is a beautiful place for West Virginians to come and it's a great place for people who are coming to West Virginia for the first time in some in some cases to see an air show to uh, to be able to experience our great state. Well, oh, go ahead, Matt. I just want to ask does the connection with the Air Guard being there impact in any way an ability to become more of a regional airport like a Hagerstown where you can have commercial flights going in and out? Well, so and we are actually we're considered a regional airport now, mm -hmm. but um, Hagerstown was a commercial airport for many many okay. years. They they were a com we were a commercial airport until the '80s, and in the '80s the feds decided not to fund so many airports and, and focus their energies, which I get. Um, but Hagerstown continued to uh, provide commercial service, but between the uh, the state the state of Maryland and the city and the county up there, they put millions and millions and millions of dollars into uh, commercial travel, um, commercial air travel in and out of Hagerstown and just could not meet the numbers uh, to continue with that commercial service. And so Hagerstown still has uh, seasonal um, air, right. you know, air, um, service, but it's not daily commercial service anymore. So they're not like a Dulles or a BWI mm -hmm. or, or one of those others. And so that if we have, we're surrounded by 12 um, commercial airports within 90 miles of us. And so it's hard to compete with that, especially when you say, hey, you know, when you fly, when you fly to Martinsburg for, to, from Martinsburg to Chicago for 800 bucks, uh, or you can drive to, to uh, Dulles and go over there for 250. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a hard sell. <laughs> It will be a difficult choice. Yeah. Yes, I mm -hmm. think eventually it probably won't be in my lifetime. Eventually, we will see commercial service mm -hmm. again in this area, okay. but it's going to be it's it's going to be when the population grows to the point where where the demand uh, is there. Mr. Gilstrap, I want to talk about the air show. Okay, <laughs> so I it's it's coming this weekend. So tell us about the structure of this. In my mind, what I'm imagining, <clears throat> excuse me, big open field, a lot of sunburn. Um, are there are there food trucks or is there uh, is, is the air show, the stuff in the air just during a certain part of the day, or is it continuous throughout? Just kind of walk us through the, the program. Okay. And focus on the sunburn part that John brought up in there, too. <laughs> wear a hat. Almost, it's almost gone. <laughs> <laughs> the, I would encourage you to wear sunscreen. They, it, you are in a big open field. And, uh, it, it, uh, we see a lot of wide-brim hats there. And, uh, the, so the, the gates open at 930. And uh, we have a lot of uh, static display aircraft, which means aircraft that are not going to fly in the show, but you can go look at and you can walk right up to and check out. And we have some really neat aircraft that are going to be there. Um, everything from uh, from Bart Rogers, old Stinson, and Bart is our historian, and his airplane has some, some, a lot of historic significance. And uh, then the Civil Air Patrol is going to have their aircraft out. It's and, and the uh, Experimental Aircraft Association is going to have several aircraft out. So it's it's a real it's a real family affair, if you will, with uh, with all of the uh, Bravo flight training. We'll have an aircraft out there with with all of the aircraft on the field. But um, we also will have uh, an Osprey out there for static display. We'll have uh, a couple of uh, of H fifty threes out there. We're going to have a an H sixty. Um, we are going to have um, uh, a C seventeen, a C. Uh, 
a C-130, uh, and multiple other aircraft on the field. So um, I encourage people to come early, go check out the aircraft, you know, walk the field, see things. We will have uh, we have a national food vendor, and the reason that we do a national food vendor, because I do get questions about this, is because with a national food vendor, uh, they allow us to use um, nonprofits in the area for, uh, for, for serving and things like that. And, of course, they oversee the entire thing, and they have people on site the whole day. Uh, but these nonprofits, then can uh, we can we can pay them to do this, and we can help generate additional funds uh, for agencies in our community. So we do that uh, more to support uh, uh, nonprofits uh, than anything else. Um, and um, there'll be you know places to get drinks, things like that. We'll have a big um, have a big water buffalo out there. So uh, folks that don't want to pay three dollars for a uh, it might be three fifty this year. I don't know uh, for a bottle of water uh, can go over to the water buffalo uh, provided by uh, Taylor Farms this year and uh, get themselves a, a cup of water and um, and you know get out of the get out of the sun a little bit. There'll be a little shade uh, tent there beside it. Um, and uh, once you're finished looking at all the statics, if you can, you can bring a lawn chair if you'd like, and you can set your lawn chair up out in the field. Uh, you can bring a blanket out. Some people do that and just lay down out there. We've been mowing now. Um, we have mowed a total of 78 acres uh, about six times over the course of the past several weeks. So it's it's doesn't look like a long, uh, a, a golf course, but it's <laughs> it's a lot uh, cleaner and smoother than a, than a, than an old. Uh, uh, apple orchard which what the whole place was many many years ago yeah. so this, <laughs> by the way saturday 87 and partly sunny sunday 79 and cloudy both beautiful perfect days for air shows yeah. <laughs> so is this going to be like at the, the the christmas parade in martinsburg where people get there early and they set out their their lawn chairs three hours before they're going to sit in them and just kind of reserve their real estate some people will do that okay mm -hmm. yeah you gotta get yeah. ready for full contact competitive exactly viewing here. exactly <laughs> so it's, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and what, what we actually do typically see the parking lot fill up uh, uh, at about starting at eight thirty or so. People come out and mm -hmm. one parking lot. There. there are a total of nine parking lots um, for the general public. Um, we have on our website and on our social media pages and everywhere else. Uh, we we tell people to come in via I eighty one and take Novak in and um, just straight shot. And we have uh, several parking areas. Um, just off of Novak on Pilot Way, there uh, they're all fields there, and we will be um, uh, providing a little bit, little bit of shuttle service to and from some of the far fields. Uh, but I will tell you a little secret: if you are local to the area and you know the roads, I would encourage you to come down Kelly Island Road, go Paynes Ford Road, around to Airport Road, and we have a. 26-acre field on Snooks Lane, and we will be parking people in that field as well, and we'll be shuttling them in to the airport. And honestly, uh, through uh, through uh, um, uh, buses provided by the Eastern Panhandle Transit Authority, and um, that is probably going to be the quickest way to get out of there. Getting in. It, I don't think it really matters. There'll be buses running nonstop the entire time, and I think we have eight eight of them running both days every day um and so um and when you when you're done you can go back down hop on your bus get back to that parking area and then you can leave again via kelly island road and get back up to route nine and go out from there but if you uh come if you leave uh through one of our large parking fields on uh just also novak drive there um novak drive will be closed um going to the east and uh, all traffic will be pointed out toward the interstate. So you'll have to go out to the interstate, and then you can decide from there where to go. The state police, the sheriff's department, and the Department of Highways are all working jointly for that. And uh, so I think it'll be a pretty smooth trip out of there, and it's going to be significantly faster than it would be otherwise because they're, they're also going to close. If you do live in the area, just remember Route 11 is going to be closed. Uh, for a period of time as well while they get that traffic out of um, those fields on Novak Drive there. And are you getting cooperation from the state regarding I-81? We are. There's going to be some large signage on I-81, and they're going, to be, they're going to have state troopers out along the way to make sure that the traffic runs smoothly. So yeah. it shouldn't be much of an issue. Are they avoiding any lane shutdowns during this time, are you aware? <laughs> well, supposedly. <laughs> of course, of course. Last night I was driving home and noticed we're doing some work on there. So supposedly yeah. that that will all be uh, they will not be doing uh, any work on that on those two days. 
Uh, and so you be you should be able to go through there pretty quickly. And where can uh, you get tickets if you haven't gotten them yet? Uh, WVAirShow.com is the best place to get tickets. We'll have uh, I have the uh, flight schedule here in front of me. I won't read the whole thing, but I can tell you. Yeah, we, go ahead. We got time. We, okay. Well, we start with um, our. our um, our opening ceremony start at 11:45 a.m. Um, we will do uh, our first jump with the national anthem and the uh, Golden Knights. Uh, they'll do a jump at noon, and uh, then we have um, uh, we do have an RC modeler demonstration, which is kind of cool. These are these these RCs are I, I had seen uh, some of these things uh, just on videos, but I didn't realize they're like 15, 16 feet across. They're mm. big. Mm -hmm. uh, remote control airplanes um, so that we'll have a quick demonstration of those at 1223 and then at 1235 we start with the uh, C5 Super Galaxy fly uh, flyby and everybody that is from this area has been here for a while will remember those mm -hmm. those are those are massive yes. aircraft biggest aircraft in the US inventory uh, and then followed by um, our own uh, C17s that are that are based in Martinsburg uh, with the 167th which has also been a great partner in this and we could not have done this without their help. Mm -hmm. um, uh, then we go into a, uh, a, an act with uh, Jerry Wells, who also flew in and out of Martinsburg for many years and is a, uh, uh, and is a, a local favorite. Uh, and then we have a, a, another uh, quick fly, flyover of the C-5 and the C-17. And then we have a B-25 uh, Panchito doing a demo, and that's a beautiful aircraft if you've never seen one of those. This one's a. It's it's from the uh, Delaware Aviation Museum. It's it's a it's a it actually it's a very well known uh, B twenty five as well. It's a it's a pretty neat neat aircraft. Um, from there we've got uh, 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 Scott Yokes Quicksilver. Scott is originally from uh, the Greenbrier County area, and he 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 and his dad built the P fifty one. He'll be flying at the Greenbrier County Airport, and uh, he, he's now down in South Carolina. But that's he has been at every air show we've ever done, and it, it's a spectacular aircraft. It's, it's, it's one of the prettiest uh, uh, P-51s I've ever seen. Um, then we're going to have a uh, um, HealthNet 8, which is one of our tenants. So HealthNet is going to do a demo with their helicopter and an ambulance uh, doing a changeover. Uh, for example, when you if you do see a helicopter, um, you know, come into an accident situation and you see a, uh, an ambulance there as well and they're doing a switch over or whatever trying to get that person uh, into the helicopter and to a to medical attention quickly um, they'll show how they do that which is pretty interesting to watch um, we uh, then we'll have um, uh, after that we'll have uh, vampire air shows is going to be flying with the DH-115 so the vampire aircraft is it's the first single jet our single engine jet in the in the US military and it's also the first single jet engine jet to ever fly across the Atlantic and so that's a pretty neat it's a pretty neat act as well uh, from there we go uh, right into a, this is an act we literally booked this morning uh, a uh, um, it's a uh, an SF uh, 260 uh, Marchetti and that's that's a really neat aircraft as well uh, then we've got um, couple of um, we got a two ship uh, um, warbird thing those are with uh, t6s and um, then we and skip Stewart who is an internationally uh, known and award-winning um, uh, aerobatic pilot he's flying his pits and he has he has been at a couple of air shows as well he's got a very edgy uh, uh, he's got a very edgy act it's it's exciting to watch the Golden Knights then do a full demo and then we go into an F-22 Raptor demonstration. I have never seen one personally, and I'm very excited about that. That's going to be spectacular. Uh, and then we Is finish. Is it cleared for supersonic? Uh, it's going to be supersonic. It's going to be. Brings me around. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, it's very spectacular to watch. I've seen it on, I've seen videos. I've just never actually yeah. seen it in person, so I'm excited about that. And then we do a heritage flight with the F-22 and the P-51. And then we... Uh, wrap up at about four o'clock and uh then the gates close at five so you'll have some time to go look at some of the static display aircraft that you missed um while you're um you know while you're heading back out again so it's um that's the uh that's the entire show um we are going to have a couple of the other um acts that we or a couple of the other aircraft that we will have on um, static 
uh, we, we do have a a C-130 uh, gunship, and there's very few of those, and that's a pretty spectacular aircraft. So we're excited to see that, too. And then we got some old antique helicopters and all kinds of other neat stuff. Is Sunday a repeat of Saturday? Yes, sir. For the most part, it is. All right, very good. A couple minor changes. Can you bring food into the grounds, your own food? So you can bring in a small um, little satchel, um, if you want to, you, you're, you, you can bring food in if you would like to. You cannot bring alcohol in or anything like that. Um, I do. Th I think that there's going to be uh, beer sales um, at a couple little places. It's in the middle of the day, so can Unless you bring your, really can you bring your own grill in? Well, that's pushing it, but. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you grill at home and put a little bit in your in your satchel. <laughs> yeah. So looking over your shoulder here at, mm. at the schedule, when you have things like 1224, I mean, it's pretty tight scheduling. So yep. is this designed where people go and they take their seat and the, the show is there the whole time? Or is it designed that people are kind of wandering around to be and then distracted by the show that's going on? Um, typically, once the show begins, people sit down. Okay. There, mm -hmm. there are um, there in are designated no areas. So there, we're going to have a large area right up on the show line. Uh, what you'll find is that the areas up on the show line that are open to the general public, though people typically do go set their chairs up at the very beginning of the day and then go out wandering around there. Right. And uh, then uh, they'll, people set up kind of in the fields. But they'll usually sit there and watch the whole show. They might run and get a drink or something to eat. Uh, and a quick break, but they typically watch the whole show, and we don't have a lot of breaks there. So we back to yeah, with a, a final minute with Nick Deal coming up here.